Hello and welcome to my kitchen. In this video, I'm going to share my mother-in-law's crispy bindi or crispy fried okra recipe. And this is the best crispy bindi that I have tasted. It's a very, very simple recipe and it's amazing and so easy to make. So let's get cooking. Here I have 250 grams of fresh okra and when you're picking out your okra you want to look for young tender ones like this. Sometimes the smaller they are the better. The bigger ones that have a rough skin like this one's got a little bit of a rough skin will mean that there are larger seeds inside. And sometimes in the Indian shops you'll see like people break off the ends like this and they do that because that's an indicator of whether the okra is tender or not. If it's not tender, you'll see lots of like string threads in here and you don't want to buy those okra. But you, generally these days you don't need to break the ends off because they're pretty much bagging them for you. So that's what you're looking for when you're looking for good okra. The first thing we'll do with the okra is to rinse it under cold water to remove any sand or any dirt on them and then go ahead and dry them in a kitchen towel. Then to completely dry them and make sure they're dry and the reason I keep saying dry is because when water associates with okra you get this sticky glueiness and you don't want that at all. So we're going to lay it out on some newspaper and let it sit there so all the water evaporates and they're completely dry. Once the okra is completely dry, we want to slice them up into thin strips like this. And if you see big seeds like this, don't worry because when you mix the flour with the cut up bindi, the seeds will all get left behind. And if the strips are too long, just cut them in half. You'll notice as you're cutting that a lot of the seeds will fall out. And if you pick them up, you'll see a bunch of seeds at the bottom. Also, after you've cut, just look around and make sure that all the strips are separated. Then we're gonna put all the cut bindi into a bowl. Try not to get all the seeds in there because we don't want to fry the seeds. Then we're gonna add some corn flour to this. So this is that white thickening corn flour and we're gonna add three to four tablespoons of this. Just sprinkle it on and we just wanna coat the bindi. So I'm gonna add about four tablespoons, which is about a quarter of a cup. And I'll be adding about a teaspoon of salt. So this is just less than a teaspoon. And if after tasting it, we find there's not enough salt, we can always sprinkle it on top. And we're just gonna mix that together. Just very lightly. Then we're just going to sprinkle some lemon juice on this. I have a half a fresh lemon in here. And I've used almost all of it. There's still some more juice in here. And then mix it with your hands. And then it's ready to fry. Then I have my karai here, my little pan, and I've got some sunflower oil in here, and I'm gonna heat up my pan so that my oil is nice and hot to make my bindi really nice and crisp. And I'm also getting my plate ready with some newspaper and a paper towel so that I can remove the bindi. Oh, my slotted spoon. Got to have a good handy slotted spoon too. Looks like my oil has heated up, so I'm gonna throw some of these bindi in there. Oh yeah. And you'll notice that the seeds pop. So be very careful.
You can see how the seeds get left behind in the bowl after you're done frying, so you don't have to worry about removing them. So even if the okra sticks together while it's frying, it breaks apart fairly easily once it's done. So you can just gently separate them once they're done. Of course, if they don't stick together while they're frying, that's even better, but they might. So there you go. And then we're just going to sprinkle it with a little bit of red chili powder. And you can make it as hot as you like. And I'm going to add a pinch of chaat masala as well. You can add amchur powder or whatever you like on there. But it is going to be sour because of the lemon juice and there is salt in there too. So you don't need to add those two things unless you want it more sour. And just give that a mix and your crispy bindi is ready to eat. You see how easy these crispy bindi are and it's a great snack that goes really well with a nice cold beer. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all soon for some more cooking inspiration. Mmm, so crunchy. Where's my beer? Ginger beer. <laughs>